I'm Savvy, and today I'm going to be doing my 300 subscriber Q&A video! Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions to me, either in the comments on my video where I announced this Q&A, or on Twitter or Instagram or anywhere else. So, let's get started with answering the questions! First question comes from Book Invasion, who wants to know, what famous celebrity will be the voice of the American Girl doll version of you when the blockbuster stop animation doll documentary of your life is made? Starting off strong! All right, so this was difficult to think about because I don't know if I have that distinctive of a voice, but I realized that I think the perfect voice actor would be John Roberts, who plays Linda on Bob's Burgers. Except instead of like the New Jersey-ish, East Coast-ish accent, they'd have to give her a Chicago accent instead. But John Roberts, if you can do a Chicago accent but do Linda's voice in that kind of way, please voice the stop motion animated documentary of my life. Also, the question didn't specifically ask this, but it got me thinking about what doll would play me. Because we've got Savvy Doll here, but since this is supposed to be, I guess, like a based on a true story movie and I'm not voicing myself, I thought maybe Savvy Doll wouldn't play herself either. So I was thinking about like what American Girl doll would fit me well, right? And I was figuring, like, if this was a Hollywood-produced movie, they probably would want an official American Girl doll to play her. They wouldn't let the, the studio use a knockoff, because you know how Hollywood is. They're all about, like, name brand recognition. They'd squeeze some American Girl product placement in there. So I was thinking about, like, what official American Girl doll would play me? And I figured the one who looks most like me in terms of having, like, curly blonde hair and freckles and blue eyes is Nikki the doll of the year I think from 2007. I never had her I just didn't get that invested in her story but she did have a dog so that was pretty cool so I think it would be her but they would have to of course dress her up to look more like me so they'd give her some hipster ass glasses they'd give her like a like a beanie because I can never be seen without a hat on they would also give her some outfits that are reminiscent of the bisexual 90s revival culture. So I would say that's what they make her look like and then the stuffed animal version of Chewy would play Chewy in this so that'd be pretty cool. Next question is from AG McDonald who wants to know what's the most underrated book you read as a child? So there's this book called Come Alive at 505 by Robin F. Brancato. Nobody's heard of this book and there's like no trace of this book on Amazon. On there is It exists on Goodreads but like it's like one of those generic template covers as opposed to like the book's actual cover. But the reason this book was such a big deal to me was when I was in middle school I wrote a poem about this book for a book report and the poem is like so trying so hard to be deep, I'm so edgy, like I'm three edgy, five you in the whole poem, right? And actually on my video that's coming out this Wednesday where I'm getting drunk and reading terrible preteen writing with Cassidy Marie, I do a reading of that poem that I wrote about that book. So now that book is like so significant to me, but it is so underrated because nobody's heard of it. Like I can't find anywhere to buy it. And I put out this call to action on Wednesday as well, but if anybody knows where to find this book, like you need to tell me, it's super important. And um, I'm sure it's not going to hold up, to be honest, because it's one of those generic 80s young adult novels. Next up, Haley Marie wants to know, what's your favorite thing about Chicago? Oh god, that's hard. I love everything about Chicago. Well, okay, not like the violence um, or anything like that, so maybe not everything. I guess the obvious answer would be like the food. I'm a huge deep dish pizza person and I always have been, so that's pretty great. I also think people here are just like friendly. Like anytime I see people in Chicago, for the most part, I can just make friends with strangers on the street. But maybe that's just me being like a weirdo all the time, so I don't know. But I think everyone here is pretty friendly. Next question is from Catherine Francis, who has two questions for me. First, she wants to know, what is the worst book you've ever read that everyone else loved? Guys, I can't help myself. Everyone sing has to me, sing everyone. it with me. Girl! Yeah, you guys all know how I feel about Girl, Wash Your Face. I'm gonna link that video in the description below. Next up is Time and Chance, who wants to know, 
the answers to a couple questions that kind of all mix together. So I'll just read it as one thing and then I will answer it as I need to break it down. What topics do you feel should be taboo in literature? Name some books that you would not sell to people under 13 years old. Why? What topics are taboo in booktube? You don't need to discuss them if you don't want to, just the topic titles will suffice. If France and Germany gave free color picture books of public nudity as exists in their respective nations to all U.S. high school students, would you protest and vote to censor these themes? Why or why not? What is the relationship between female tween to mid-twenties reading immersive sex scenes in YA as only written material can provide and masturbating? What is the relationship between young female lust and milking it via book sales for filthy lucre? My overall topic here is exploring gray areas. Cool. I am really big on exploring gray areas too. I think it's interesting, like, if you've seen my publishing industry video, which I'll also link in the description below, that video I kind of talk about how we shouldn't really view anything in a black and white way, and in that video I'm specifically talking about there's like the traditional publishing versus self-publishing divide and how a lot of books don't fit into either of those categories and we shouldn't categorize books that way to begin with. So the whole concept of gray areas is something I super, super support, so I find this question really interesting. So I'm going to try to break it down a little bit first, um, like what topics do you think should be taboo in literature? Honestly, nothing. In some of the jobs I've worked at, there, we celebrate the week where everybody um, reads and promotes the books that some schools or some libraries have tried to get rid of because they cover topics that some people have deemed controversial. And I'm just not a fan of censorship. Like, even if it's a topic that I don't agree with or is a topic that I think is harmful, I would rather the book be out there and people be able to read it and critique it. And I'm happy to read a book and say, this book is problematic, this book is harmful, here's why I don't recommend it to other people. But I would never say this book should, should not have existed in the first place. For example, I go pretty hard at Girl Wash Your Face for how problematic I think the book is in terms of like body image and not encouraging women to love themselves as they are. But I would never say this book shouldn't have been published, get this book out of the public eye because I don't think that's my place and I don't think that's anyone's place to ever say. As far as what topics are taboo in booktube, I'm not sure I've been around on booktube long enough to say for sure what those are yet. Um, overall, I haven't seen like anyone on booktube say like these topics cannot be discussed here, so I'm not really sure what they are. I'm, I'm sorry if that answer is not satisfying. Um, so then the next part is about like France and Germany have given picture books with nudity in them to kids and like would I want these like if these kind of things came out in the US what I think they should be censored. I do not think they should be censored just as I said earlier I'm not a fan of censorship in general. Also I think that in the US we do already have some children's books with nudity in them. Um, I mean obviously there's like the books that are meant to teach kids about their body or whatever, but then there's also the book In the Night Kitchen by Marie Sendak comes to mind. I think that book got, did get on a banned books list because of the nudity in it. It was like banned from a couple schools, right? Like the book's still published, it's still out there, you can still get it. So I definitely would say no, don't, don't censor this. If you're asking for like the relationship between young adult literature and masturbating, like I, I guess that like varies depending on the person who's reading it, what their relationship is. Like, are they reading the sex scene and getting like a sexual gratification out of it? Or are they reading the sex scene and like seeing it as part of a plot or a story? And like, again, I can't answer that because that's going to vary depending on the reader and depending on the person who's interpreting it and their own life experiences. All right, next up is I Read Past My Bedtime, who has four questions for me. First up, she wants to know, do I have a favorite piece that I wrote? Yes, I would say my current favorite piece that I've written is my novel One Final Vinyl, which is coming out this September. This is a young adult novel that explores themes related to mental health and also the multi-generational friendships that can spring up between teenagers and elderly people and just a lot of this novel is very close to my heart and, and I use a lot of my personal emotions and personal life experiences in it so it matters a lot to me. Other than that there's the Forever Home Friends book I wrote called Smile Chewy which is based on Chewy and so that book always holds a special place in my heart too. Next she wants to know where did you get the name Chewy from? So we actually didn't name Chewy that was already his name when he was at the shelter Shockingly, we are Chewie's third home. I know, who, they, look at him. <laughs> like, how could you not want to love him forever? Just like, he's so perfect. But he was already named Chewie when we went to the shelter and he was already two years old when we adopted him a couple years ago. So we didn't want to change his name at that point. We we're like, it's not worth it to confuse him. Third is my favorite color, 
which is purple. Fourth is my favorite food, dessert, or drink. My favorite food is anything with buffalo sauce on it. I will eat chips with buffalo sauce on it, salad with buffalo sauce. I've had dark times in my life before where I've drank buffalo sauce out of a shot glass. But yeah, buffalo sauce, anything with that on it is my favorite food. Favorite dessert is hard because I will eat anything with sugar in it. I, I just love sugar so much. Favorite drink depends on the time of day. I'm a person that believes there are two drinks you should drink and it depends what time it is. If it's light out, you drink coffee. If it's dark out, you drink scotch. There is no in between. If you drink scotch when it's light out, that's unhealthy. If you drink coffee when it's dark out, that's unhealthy. If you drink coffee in your scotch, you can do both of those all day long. Avery Loves Books wants to know, what's your favorite book to movie adaptation? The first things I thought of were my least favorite book to movie adaptation, which is The Princess Diaries, and then second, which is my favorite movie to book adaptation, which is Star Trek The Motion Picture. But my favorite book to movie adaptation is actually really hard for some reason. Right now I'm gonna go with Gone Girl, but if I think of something different later, I'll just like fix that. KT's Bookish Escape wants to know, who are some of your autobi authors? Right now, probably Frederick Bachman, Rainbow Rowell, John Green, and then like I have some authors that I'm friends with, so I'll buy all of their books, not just because they're my friends, but also because I love their work. If you're my friend and I don't like your work, I'll probably still buy it. Like. I love you. But some of my author friends whose books I'd recommend are uh, my friend Candace Robinson, she writes awesome YA fantasy. Uh, my friend Chelsea Lauren who writes young adult and new adult contemporary does a great job of that. My friend Becky Caddy who writes children's picture books and they're amazing so those are people that no matter what they write, I'm getting it. A Bookworms Adventures wants to know, what is one book you'd like to read for the first time all over again? I think I'm gonna go with Carry On for this one just because this book like got me out of a reading slump. I guess it wasn't that big of a reading slump. I was still reading books. But like when this book came out, this was the first book I had read in a couple years that I was like hooked on and could not stop reading. And I suddenly remembered what that feeling felt like of being like, I'm attached to this book. So to have that feeling all over again for the first time will be awesome. And the sequel's coming out soon. So I think I'll get to have that feeling again pretty quickly. Remembered Reads wants to know, does your dog have any favorite toys to share? Depends what you mean by share. If you mean does he have toys that he will share with other dogs, no. Chewy is a little brat and he keeps all of his toys to himself. If you mean does he have toys that he would like to share with the audience, here are some pictures of Chewy ripping up his Chewbacca toy. So this wasn't actually his toy to be fair. The story behind this toy is that one year for Valentine's Day, my mom was at the drugstore and she saw this giant Chewbacca and he was holding the heart that said, Chewy loves you. And my mom was like, oh my God, Savvy needs this because she needs a heart that says, Chewy loves you. So she got me the giant Chewbacca and we put it up on a shelf so that Chewy wouldn't get it. But somehow, even though there's no way he could have reached any of these shelves, Every time we turn around, he was somehow dragging the giant Chewbacca down the hall. So we were like, okay, he really likes it. You know, the heart is the main part we want to keep. He can have the rest of it. So we kept the heart and then we gave him the Chewbacca toy and he chewed it up. And it was so big that he just got stopping all over the house. It looked like it snowed inside our house because of this. Oh my God, Chewy. All right, Christopher Drost wants to know, you've written a transgender character. How did you get the idea to include her? So I think Christopher is referring to in Sculpt Yourself, there is a transgender character named Catherine. She's a 16 year old girl. And when the drug Lipomorph comes out that you're, you can use this drug to redistribute the fat on your body and redo your proportions, Catherine takes this drug to give herself more like traditionally feminine features. When I was writing this, I thought about like, if this drug came into reality and like actually happened, which it won't, so don't worry. If it did, like what would, like how would different people react to it? Who would be the people who would be most affected by it? If uh, the ability to rearrange your body proportions came along, a lot of young transgender girls maybe who were not able to get top surgery yet or were not able to get hormone therapy yet, they would be able to start to match their body more to how their mind is. So I thought that it was good to try to explore that perspective um, especially because people are talking about like, 
Especially because in this book people discuss like, oh, this drug is legal to use, you know, if you're 18 you can do whatever you want with your body, and this girl's 16, but she needs to use it as opposed to people who just want to use it. So there's a little bit of a, a difference there. So that's why I decided to include her in this book. Christopher also has an awesome series going on on his YouTube channel right now where he's talking about how to write transgender characters and characters who have dysphoria and things like that. So I recommend you guys check that out. I'll link to Christopher's channel in the description below as well. Jaguar Cat Lit wants to know, can you list free editing sites for your booktuber friends? Of course! So I use Lightworks to edit my videos and I highly recommend Lightworks because it's a lot like Adobe Premiere but it's free. It's like an open source program so I download that and then I'm able to do all my editing stuff in Lightworks. So if you guys have any questions about how to use the program, I've been learning it as I go and I'm happy to help you guys out with anything on that. That's the main program I'd recommend. I don't know of any other free programs that are good other than like there's like iMovie and Windows Movie Maker, but I don't really use those. I haven't in a long time so I wouldn't be able to like give recommendations on how to use the most up-to-date versions of those. So I would recommend Lightworks. Evie Redding wants to know, do you annotate your books for reviews? If so, how do you do so? You guys are gonna kill me for this. When I'm reading a book and I want to remember what parts I want to talk about for my review, I mark the pages with these. I hope that doesn't like burst anyone's capillaries here. This is the easiest way for me to remember what page my stuff is on for reviews. Sorry. Lori and Thomas want to know, what fictional place would you most like to go? For this, I'm going to say that I want to live on the Enterprise. Specifically, the Enterprise in Star Trek The Next Generation. I think that looks like so much fun because everyone's friends and family are on the ship. You could probably bring your dog on the ship. Everyone's always running around doing crazy stuff all night. I just think that would be so fun to live there. So that would be my place to live. The Backlog Quest wants to know, do you have any other pets beside Chewie? Man, I wish. Chewie is such an only child. He demands all the attention and I wouldn't have it any other way because I love him so much. But no, currently we do not have any other pets. I sometimes hint at Chewie that in the future he's going to be getting a little brother or sister and he doesn't seem to like that idea, but he'll come around. Made with Books says, I would love a list of your all-time favorite books if you haven't done that yet. So I made a video when I turned 25 called like 25 books that are special to me or something like that. So I'll link that in the description below, but I'll also name some of those books. But yeah, some of my favorite books right now are Turtles All the Way Down, My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, The Disaster Artist, The Misfits, Carry On, Fangirl, and then like a whole list of business self-help books. I'll link to my self-help books video in the description as well so you guys can check out which ones I recommend and which ones I don't. But yeah, uh, most of my all-time favorite books are young adult books or business self-help books because those are my preferred genres, which is, I guess, kind of weird. The Sleepy Reader wants to know, what advice would you give us newbies on growing our new channels and making them great? I feel like I'm a newbie. Like, I don't know. I feel like I'm still growing my channel. But um, what's helped me so far has just been like getting super involved in making friends with a lot of people. Like, I'm constantly going through my subscription feed and, like, making playlists of all the videos that I need to watch from everyone I'm subscribed to. And whenever I watch a video from someone that I subscribe to, I always make sure to leave a comment because I think making those discussions happen is a good way to build a lot of connections in the community. So I write a lot of comments to people. I constantly search the newbie tag to meet other newbies on here, and I think that connecting with other people who are new as well is a good way to make everyone feel welcome in the community so I would recommend that. And then in terms of just like making your videos great, I like to spend a lot of time on editing. I like to use a lot, like I'll use text on the screen, I'll change the color of different clips, I'll zoom in out and crop certain things. So like just trying to make it visually appealing I think is fun because you can use film as a visual medium as well as a method for talking to other people. So those would be my suggestions. Ms. Betty G wants to know, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I usually do this question as an icebreaker with some of my students in the creative writing classes I teach, and I always say that my superpower would be to never have to sleep. Because I have so much stuff I'm trying to do right now, guys. I work so many jobs, and I'm in school, and I'm writing novels, and I'm trying to run my own business, and I'm trying to grow this channel, and I'm just like, 
what if I didn't have to sleep? What if I weren't tired all the time? I could just keep on going. I'd have all those extra hours and like that would just be magical. Next, I'm gonna go to the questions that I got on Twitter. There's just a couple of these. All right, so Charlie Brooke wants to know, who's your favorite character in one of your books? So I'm assuming she means like a book that I've written. Um, and that's why she said your books, at least that's my assumption. Um, if I'm wrong on that, Charlie, correct me and I'll answer it for um, a book that I've read instead. My favorite character that I've written is Daisy from One Final Vinyl. That's my young adult novel that's coming out this September and Daisy is a 90 year old woman. It's so much fun writing about an older character and getting to explore like her life and what would have happened before this moment and how she got to this age and what her family's like. I'm gonna be making a doll of her soon, so I am super excited for that. And so I'd say she's my favorite character so far. Charlie also wants to know my favorite author. Um, this is a cliche answer, I guess, but probably John Green. I love him and his stuff just influenced me so much when I was a teenager and continues to um, inspire me more and more as I get older. Jordan Smith has a couple questions as well. He wants to know first, what did you find as the most effective way to promote your YouTube channel, book titles, etc.? So in terms of promoting my YouTube channel, the, the thing that I found most helpful was mostly the tags. Before I did the newbie tag, I was just making a couple videos and putting them out into the void and like I'd post them on social media and sure a few people would watch from there, but I wasn't really making the kind of connections or building the kind of community online that I wanted to. So once I learned about the booktube and authortube newbie tags, and then I learned about all these tags that people are searching for that people do, I was like, there we go. So I made my newbie tag. And from there, I started getting comments from people. Then I started going to their channels and commenting on their videos. And I started like really getting to interact with everybody. So I would highly recommend doing tags if you haven't already. The most effective way to promote my books depends on the genre. If we're talking about my novels, I think actually making a booktube channel has actually helped me a lot with that because I've reached all these people who really want to read things and through talking to them about books, a lot of them are like, oh, I'm interested in reading your book. And I'm like, that's amazing. I'm so excited. So I think that, you know, YouTube itself has been really useful for that. In terms of my Forever Home Friends books and kids books that I've written, the most useful thing for that has been going to events. So I will be a vendor at different events in Chicago, different craft fairs or small business fairs or art fairs or things like that. And having a table there and getting to talk to people directly and connect with people one on one, especially if I can do it at an event that promotes like animal shelters or something like that, that's helped me make a lot of sales. So I would say events and doing sales in person has been helpful for me for that. And finally, and this is the last question, I love that I can end on this. What do you love the most about booktube? Oh my god, I love everything about booktube. How do I even choose? I mean, I love all these new friends that I've made. I feel like I've met so many people who have the same interests as me in reading and writing, and it's just, that's so exciting for me. I also love that I get to spend more time making videos. Like, I have an excuse to make more videos and put them out there constantly because I was always a big fan of filmmaking. I loved making narrative style videos. I loved making all kinds of videos. But until I'd have, like, a book trailer to make or something like that, I didn't always have the opportunity or the audience for my videos. So now I'm like, I get to express myself through not only writing, but also through film, which is the other medium that I love to express myself through. So it's just like, I get to combine so many of my passions and it's just, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Thank you guys so much for those questions. I really appreciate it. I'll do another Q and A video when I hit a thousand subscribers. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway, which I've talked about in previous videos. So remember to subscribe to the channel and then maybe you could win something in a giveaway as well. So that's pretty exciting. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, give the video a like, leave me a comment, all the YouTube stuff that people normally ask for. I want it too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tomorrow's video is going to take a little bit of a different kind of path from my normal content. I'm going to be putting up a Star Trek fan video edit where I recut an episode of Star Trek to fit with an 80s song. Like, how much more savvy could you get than that? So that's what's going up tomorrow. But then on Wednesday, I will be doing my Ukraine do drink drinking game of reading my old writing with Cassidy and Marie. So that'll be a good time. Be sure to stay tuned for that. There is a premiere set up for that. So you can go ahead and set a reminder and join the live chat on Wednesday at noon central when that video comes out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys again soon. Bye.